Hi there, chances are you landed on this video because you were looking for best ways to lose weight for women. And in this video, I'm going to be teaching you some of that and giving you my top secrets that I use for my coaching clients to help them stay on track on their transformation journey. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this. Hey, welcome to Lance Crone Coaching, where my mission is to eliminate any sort of confusion, help you to get the fastest and most sustainable results possible. So thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button. That really helps me to be able to deliver more content to you. And um, if you like the video that I'm about to teach, which I'm positive you are, click the like button. Uh, the video that I'm about to show you is actually uh, directly from one of my Facebook Lives in my coaching program with some women that are getting some amazing results. It was so good that I decided to go ahead and share it here on my YouTube channel uh, specifically for you guys. So I hope that you enjoy it. I know that these tips are absolutely going to help you on your transformation journey. So watch those. Um, I would love to hear comments of what your thoughts are, some of the struggles, etc. Let me know below and I answer each and every one of those. So uh, thanks again for tuning in and uh, we'll dive right in. Hey, what's going on guys? It is time for the video workshop. Um, thanks for joining. Um, I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about um, some of the top secrets or the top tips, whatever you want to call them, towards staying on track towards your transformation. So um, obviously <clears throat> we have a program that works we're sticking to it, we know the nutrition, we know the exercises, we're sticking to all of this, but we can still fall off, we can still mess up. Um, and then aside from that, <clears throat> we can still have these issues to where we get stuck in this routine that we're just not quite getting the results we want, even though somebody else is doing the same thing and getting results. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about that today. Number one, the most important thing, I cannot stress this enough, number one is getting clear, getting super clear about what it is that you actually want. You cannot get where you wanna go if you don't even know where that is. So the very first thing that you have to do, get clear about what it is that you want, and then second thing, if it's not written down, it doesn't freaking exist. I cannot stress that enough. There is something that happens with the brain and the hand. As soon as we write something down, it solidifies it. And we all, we know through the, some of the teachings that I've given of the subconscious, how important it is to completely indoctrinate yourself with um, into the subconscious things that we want to believe as if they are real and one of the best ways to do this is to write something down read it even go further is to read it out loud even further than that is reading it out loud with amazing emotion so to read this thing this goal the best way to do it is to read it in present tense or to write down this goal in present tense so for example if I wanted to be down 20 pounds by September, um, what I would do is, is to write down the date is September you know, 1st, and I now weigh, you know, whatever that is, 20 pounds lighter. Um, for me, it would be like 220 something. So I would put um, 221 pounds, um, it's September 1st. I feel better and stronger than ever and I'm continuing to go towards my next goal, which is X, Y, and Z. This is the way to write down a goal. This is the way to stick to a goal. Read that, read it out loud every day, and read it with authority, with emotion, with conviction. This is the first thing. The second thing, besides just getting clear on your goals, writing them down and reading them aloud, is to know how often to track your progress. So this is the thing, if you are not tracking your progress, not here and there, consistently, you don't have any data to prove whether what you're doing is working or not. And if you're doing something that does actually work, 
why not test your progress? Because here's what happens. If we're on track, we test our progress, now we are affirming what we're doing, which does something amazing to our psyche that we're doing this and we're seeing that, holy crap, I'm doing this, it's working, I'm gonna set a new goal. Not only am I gonna set a new goal, I'm gonna push harder. So now we're doing things that once appeared to be that we have this amazing discipline, when in reality, it's just that we're so motivated because of the, the progress and the affirmation that we just saw. So this is the first thing. This is why we want to measure. It's going to affirm that what we're doing is actually working. We wait too long. We don't get to see that. We don't get the affirmation that we need when we need it, which is I typically recommend every four to six weeks. I don't recommend any earlier than that. You can if you're doing something extreme. My programs are not extreme. They're not something to where I'm gonna be cutting your calories by a thousand. This isn't the biggest loser. Um, you know, this is something that again, we're teaching specifically how to have long-term sustainable results where there's steady progress and we wanna do it as quickly as possible, but we don't wanna do it at the sacrifice or the expense of our lifestyle. That's why people fail, because they do these things that are so extreme or that are so restrictive that they see results, but they can't keep it going. What's the point of that? We're not doing that. But since we are doing something that does allow for amazing results and for sustainability, let's measure every four weeks. Let's check this, not the scale. The scale is only one third of the story. So we're going to weigh, which is only a third of the story again. We're going to measure, we're gonna take circumference. And then finally, the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our body fat, whether that's, if you have access to something that's going to allow you to get, you know, um, uh, calipers, yes, there's human error in some of these things, but the fact of the matter is, it w should at least be consistently um, the same inaccuracy as what it was when you started. So you should be at least seeing those numbers go down, which is just going to tell us that we're not losing muscle, um, that we're not dehydrated, that we're actually losing body fat. So that's the other, the other thing, the, the negative of not checking progress and measurements often enough is the fact, and again, this is going to be, again, keeping you on the right path towards your transformation. If I wait eight weeks or nine weeks and I'm not doing the right things, maybe I know that I'm not doing all of the right things, I'm flubbing a little bit, but I really can't tell in the mirror or I'm lying to myself because we can do that very easily. We can justify behavior. And I'm lying to myself a little bit saying it's not that bad, I'll pick it up. In four weeks, if I'm measuring consistently in four weeks, what that's gonna tell me is, holy crap, I'm looking at the consequences of my actions, I'm gonna change that. If I'm serious about my transformation, I'm going to change that. If I'm not, yes, that presents a different problem, but we're gonna talk about the fact that if I wait eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, because I'm burying my head in the sand or because I don't think it's that important, now what we have, is instead of four weeks of doing things that are slightly flubbing and causing either less um, action or less results, we're actually getting worse results. We're getting worse you know, progress. We're reverting or we're actually regressing even worse. It, it can either go to where four weeks of that happens and then I go back and fix this, or it can happen to where I have nine weeks, 10 weeks, of this negative behavior. And now what's gonna happen is because I waited too dang long, I get to the end of this, I check my progress and now I feel defeated. This happens to so many people. They check their progress, but they didn't do it consistently because they didn't wanna know the truth. They got to a point now that they feel like, oh my God, I'm worse than whenever I started or I'm back to where I started. What's the point? What's the use? I've lost momentum and not only that, I've regressed. How difficult is that to stay on track if this is your mentality or if this is what you're doing on a regular basis? So I implore you to change that, measure often enough so that if you are going down a path that's not leading you to the transformation you want, it's four weeks instead of 10 or 12 or whatever. We can fix four weeks very, very quickly. We can tighten up a few things, okay? So that's on measurements, that's staying consistent so that you know where you're at. The final thing that I'm going to talk to you about, I could go on and on and on about different things, but what I'm going to talk to you about finally is the fact that you have to stop thinking to yourself that 
at any moment, if I get off track a little bit, that it means that I'm going to get fat again, or get skinny again, or lose my muscle again, or that it means that I'm going back to the lifestyle. We do this thing constantly that we're assigning meaning to what's happening all the time. It's the way that we're designed, and it's not necessarily what's happening to us, it's what we think is happening to us that we assign that meaning to. So for example, for me, I have been working out now for 17 going on 18 years. I do not have a fear of going back to my old lifestyle. Why? Because it was forever ago. But I, even several years in, or even a year in, or six months in, I didn't constantly think that if I missed a workout that it automatically meant that I'm somehow in danger of going back to the, the way that it was before where I didn't work out, didn't care what I ate, and didn't pay attention. Which means less self-confidence, feeling worse about myself, and feeling like there was no point to things, blah, blah, blah. Because this is what happens. We start thinking that if we miss something or if we mess up on a meal, that it somehow equivocates to this old lifestyle that we so desperately wanted to get out of. So you have to stop associating that just because you missed a meal, you, you messed up on something or whatever. Don't see this as an all or nothing scenario. This isn't the way that it goes. You're going to have times that you mess up, you're gonna mess up on a meal, who cares? Get back on it. The fact of the matter is, is that this is your lifestyle. And this is a marathon, it's not a sprint, which simply means that in the grand scheme of things, if you lay out a timeline of your fitness progress, your transformation, your journey, call it whatever you will, the fact of the matter is, this meal, this week of missing workouts, this week of messing up your meals, it is a drop, a tiny drop in the bucket of the grand scheme of your journey. But you have to decide, the same way that whenever you become a parent, you decide that these are your kids, come hell or high water, no matter whether you're proud or not proud at the moment or whatever, at no point do you fear that all of a sudden you're childless because your child messes up. And I know that this seems ridiculous to make that analogy or that comparison, but the fact of the matter is, it's never something that we think about whenever things don't go the way that we plan to think that, oh my God, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn into a single parent or I'm gonna turn into a, you know, a, uh, a childless individual again. We just don't think about other things that way, but we're constantly in fear of losing any progress or losing this lifestyle that's leading us to a better way. So as soon as we mess up on something, we automatically assign this meaning to it it's like, oh, I'm messing up because it means that I'm going back to this way that I was before. And then what happens is we create this self-fulfilling pro prophecy. We start acting in accordance when we believe that we messed up that meal because we truly aren't in this new lifestyle that we're actually still straddling and we're still like fighting against this old lifestyle. What happens is we believe that that meal or this mess up has to do more with the old lifestyle than just being human. And then what happens is we start acting in accordance to that belief, which is, I'm not really in this lifestyle. I am still struggling with this and in any moment I could go back to that. That's not the mentality that we need to have. So my, my goal for you is to stop thinking and to stop associating yourself with where you were before, even if it was just yesterday. And, ye and yesterday is the day that you just started, you know, with your program, your transformation journey. Stop identifying and associating yourself with yesterday, no matter when it was. Because the fact of the matter is, you are on a plan. You are doing things that people from yesterday, you, wouldn't have done. So the fact of the matter is, focus forward, Stay focusing on the fact that you are in this new path, you're on this new journey, and then a meal that messes up doesn't mean anything more than just a meal, that's it. It just means that you were tempted by something and you just felt like doing something that was outside of what you normally do. But you need to associate with the lifestyle that you are on is your normal. From here on out, it's your normal. Stop thinking about I have 20 pounds to lose or 30 pounds to lose. Start focusing on the process and less on the result. And that will help you so that you just go, oh, well my process is, is that every day 
you know, I eat clean. I, and, and that can be whatever it is. I'm not going to go on that tangent <clears throat> because I teach all kinds of flexible dieting techniques, etc. But the fact of the matter is when you start associating yourself with the process and less with the desired result, now all of a sudden we've got some amazing um, progress is happening because now we know that every day the process is, is our goal. The process is, is I eat in a certain way, I work out consistently, um, you know, I focus on my mental health, my mindset, my goals, etc. That's my process. When that's my focus, the result follows suit no matter what. But if I'm focused on, oh, I've got to lose this 30 pounds and that's the most important thing to me, as soon as I do something that doesn't line up with what that goal might be, I begin to fear and that trigger comes up and then that's whenever I start falling off and making worse mistakes. So focus on the process, that's the most important thing right now. This will keep you on the right path. So I hope that these things help you. I have no idea how many tips I gave you, but the fact of the matter is, these are the best possible secrets that will keep you on track towards your transformation journey. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I can't wait to hear. Uh, I would love to hear your comments below. So if you have questions on some of these things, maybe it triggered something for you, comment below. And um, if it resonated with you, like the video too, so that I can know that I'm on the right path and know that uh, I'm getting your feedback and I will adjust what I'm teaching for what you guys have. So thanks again, and I will see you on the next one.